And we ought not treat God casually because he's doing everything for us. We ought to do all we can for the Lord. Praise the Lord. My grandmother, she used to say, I ain't going to rust out, I'm going to wear out for the Lord. She said, I ain't going to rust out. Things rust out when you let them sit off to the side. Some of y'all praises are rusted. Y'all want to get to oil on them. Get up and praise the Lord. You might have praise him like I praise him, but praise the Lord. Everybody can clap their hands. Everybody can stump their feet. Everybody can lay their hand if you got a hand. I told you years ago, many years ago when I was in Memphis, that girl, her hands were the floor, but she was clapping her hands better than people with two good hands. I said, man, I'm going to clap my hands. If she can clap her hands and praise God, my hands are the floor, and my, I got two good hands, none of my uh, fingers are broken. Praise the Lord. We can praise God. What you got to praise God. Yeah, yeah. You know, we looking at other people. God looking at you. Yeah. Well, I don't sing like you. God says, sing praises to me. Yeah. You sing praises at home to the Lord. Yeah. You may not sing in the choir, but you can sing praises to the yeah. Lord. Yeah. Yeah. At home. Lord, I don't sound like them. He said, you sing praises. Yeah. You praise his name. Yeah. We all are unique. The greatest compliment you can have is when they say you you doing yourself. Yes. And you're not doing nothing wrong. Praise the Lord. This is that simple. You preach, you did what you do. That's me. Praise the Lord. I'm doing me then. I'm not doing anybody else. You do what God called you to do. Praise the Lord. And God will bless you real good, won't he? Yes, Praise the Lord. I don't feel no way it's time. Somebody said, I've come too far. From where I started from. Nobody what? That the would be. But I know he brought me to what? Oh my God. You better believe that when you get up every day. You may be going through some things in your life. But he brought you too far to leave you. He brought you too far. They feel like you're alone, but the Lord is there by your side. Yes. So if nobody else, you can't talk to nobody else, talk to the Lord. Amen. Y'all hear me laugh sometimes? Yeah. Sometimes my grandmother be at home and sometimes she say, well, Lord, I guess I'm getting ready to go in the kitchen. <laughs> she was at home by herself a lot. Well, talk to the Lord about everything. Yeah. Well, Lord, I guess I'm getting ready to go get ready for church. I sure have been tired, but God give me strength to get my clothes on. All right, I can make it to the house of the Lord. Yes. Oh, I feel something in my spirit. Yeah. When you talk to God and tell God all about it, yeah. he's concerned about the smallest things to the greatest things yeah. in your life. Yeah. All you got to do is talk to him. Yeah. Lord, I don't know how I'm going to make it. Yeah. And nobody said they can take me to the doctor. God will make a way for you because yeah. I'm depending on him. Who is able. When you have done all you can do. The Lord will help you. Praise the Lord. The Lord will send something for you. He'll make a way for you. But don't miss what he sent for you. A lot of times we miss what God sent for you. God I told you I wanted to go to the hospital in the escalator. Why you sent the cab? Whatever he sent you go in. Praise the Lord. You can't dictate what it is. But say I'm going in the name of Jesus. The Lord will bless us. We will be praise the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is in this place. We're going to go to the Word of God. Today the Lord is blessing real good. So glad to see all of you, see your faces. We continue to pray for all those that are sick and afflicted, those that are watched by streaming, those that will watch later on, those that are here, we pray. God will continue to bless you Amen. and strengthen you. Praise the Lord. Yes. <laughs> that the Lord will be with you. Praise the Lord. I want to take as many people to heaven as possible with me. You hear me? Praise the Lord. I want everybody. Don't you know the Lord wants us all to go to heaven? That's why he's long suffering. He wants everybody to go. Now, everybody not going to go because they're not going to get right. But he wants everybody to go. So I'm trying to take as many of them for me as possible. 
Praise the Lord. You know, the kids, they be happy when they can bring so many people with them sometimes. So look who all I got. They going with me. Praise the Lord. Let's go to the book of 1 Corinthians 15, chapter 57 to 58, verse. Thank God for the musician. Thank God for the praise team. Thank God for all of you. Praise what our ears have heard, what our eyes have seen. Thank God for the Spirit of God being in this place. Praise the Lord that I know that the Lord is here. I don't want to be like uh, the Bible says that. And I didn't know it. But you ought to know when the Spirit of the Lord is here. When the Spirit of the Lord is here, He's here to do whatever you need. That's why you invite His presence. You invoke His presence in the atmosphere. That's why we go through. We just don't be going through the most of the church. That's why we pray. That's why we sing. That's why we worship. Because we need God's inhabitation to come in and see about us. In the midst of doing all that, when you do that, you invoke God's presence to come in. And he can save. He can heal. He can deliver. He can make a way. He can work a miracle. Whatever, when you invite him in. Because the Bible says he inhabits the praise. His habitat. Y'all heard of habitat for humanity? Who build homes? His habitat. My God. He inhabited the praise of his people. Glory to God. God comes in. Oh, I'm going to put it like this. God comes in and builds a house in my praise. Glory to God. Ooh, praise the Lord. And whatever I need. When he come in, as he right there, whatever I need is right there. Glory to God. I might need a pickup. You better learn how to praise God. Amen. Anybody don't raise your hand. Anybody come to church depressed? Anybody come down and out? Anybody ever came to church broke? Don't raise your hand. Praise the Lord. I need God to do something for me. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I need him to do something for me. And you can only count on God. Amen. You can count on God. People let you down, but you can count on God. You can call God at his word. Yeah. And he will help you. He will bring you out. He will lift you up. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Just come in expectation. I tell everybody, come to the house of God with expectation. All right. All right. Don't come with negativity. Come with positivity. Because you serve a positive God. You know you don't serve a negative God. Amen. Serve a positive God. Everything about him is positive. He's not negative. Praise the Lord. So that's why we sing it. So put your mind on Jesus. We're going to have a time. Yeah. Praise the Lord. He's doing it. First Corinthians 15, 57 through 58. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brother, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye you know that your labor is not in vain. The, the thought today is victorious. Victorious. Victorious means having victory. Having won the victory. And you know when you have Jesus in your life, you have the victory. It's the characteristics of victory. Victorious is the fulfillment of overcoming an, an enemy or an antagonist. What is our enemies today? The devil, sin, death, shame, things that come against us. But when we have the Lord in our life, we are victorious. Is success a mastery in struggle? Yes, we go through struggles, but if we have the Lord on our side, we're guaranteed the victory if we use his recipe for success or an endeavor against odds or difficulty. So saints and friends, people of God, I want you to know that victory Today is in the name of Jesus. Yes. It's in the name of Jesus. The only one that can give us true victory, the only one that is able to help us to live this victorious life, uh, with all the things we got to go through and the things we see and we hear and we read about, is Jesus. The Bible tells us who Jesus is, and we all can have a personal relationship with Jesus. The Bible says that Jesus is the Son of the living God. He's the Christ. He's the Messiah. He's the anointed one. He's the Savior of the world. He's the bread of life. 
He's the rock. He's the wheel in the middle of the wheel. He's the one that keeps things going. Oh, he's the strong top. Jesus is our help. Amen. You ever needed help? The Lord is your help. Amen. Jesus is a very present help. I love that because the Bible uh, puts accent on things. If I said Jesus is your help, that's enough. But the Bible says he's a very present help. Not only is he there, he's right on top of you. Glory to God. He's there to help you. He's our strength. He's our eyes divided. When the odds are against you and you're living for the Lord, he changes the odds in your favor. He's our protector. He's our healer. We get healed through Jesus Christ. Right? He's our deliverer. He's our way maker. He's our bridge over troubled water. He's the author and finisher of our faith. We're talking about Jesus, the Alpha and Omega. Jesus is everything, and you often hear me say, Jesus is the answer for the world today. He's the answer to every problem and the answer to every situation. John 3.16, everybody ought to know that people that don't even contend church ought to know John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And who said believe in him should not perish, but have what everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. There's that word might. That means you have to accept it. Yes. You got to accept it yourself. <laughs> Love sent his son into a sinful, dying world. Do you know we live in a dying world? But we don't have to die without a God on our side. He said, love sent his son into a dying world to redeem mankind from sin shame, to buy us back, pay our ransom that we could not pay, that we could live a victorious earthly life and have a right to everlasting life. You can live a blessed life with Jesus and then still inherit eternal life. Yeah. We live in a time where you can see all over America and all over the world that we're living in the time of the Antichrist. Well, there's a prevalence in society uh, where they don't want to hear about Jesus. They want to erase Jesus out of a lot of things and eradicate him out of society. But the more they try to push him out, the worse they get. Yeah. Yeah. Because you need Jesus. Yeah. We cannot survive without the Lord. We need more Jesus in our life than we ever needed before. Yeah. We need Jesus in our mouth. People got everything else in their mouth. Put Jesus in your mouth. Talk about Jesus. Put Jesus in your heart. A lot of people give the Lord lip service, but they don't have the Lord in their heart. A lot of people say they're Christian, but they're not Christ like because they talk it, but the Bible said that lips are near me, but their heart is far from me. They don't have me in their heart. And Jesus is the only mediator between God and man. Did you know that? You can't get to God unless you go through Jesus. So that'd be easy for y'all when y'all deal with people with fake religion and you don't have Jesus as the mediator between God and man. You don't have no religion. You don't have a pure religion with God. Amen. So women, men, boys and girls, uh, we need Jesus. Yeah. And I'm here to preach. I'm here to teach about Jesus. Yeah. I'm telling you about the victory in our world today is through Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to preach Jesus until everybody Mercy to you because you're going through 
He don't give mercy to you because uh, something happened to you. Amen. He don't give you a time out. Amen. He'll wear you out if you let him. Amen. He's seeking to do what his job is. Mm -hmm. To what? To steal, kill, and destroy. Amen. And he's coming at your weakest moment. Yes. He ain't coming with you strong. And he want to come with you down and out. Yes. You know, he's coming to get you yes. with his threefold plan. But we ought to serve the Lord because God gives us grace and mercy. Amen. John 10 and 10 says, The thief cometh not for what? But for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Amen. But Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. If you want more abundance in your life, you better have Jesus in your life. Uh, yeah. You need Jesus in your life. Amen. Amen. Our God He's a God of no lack. He's a God of overfilling. He's a God of overabundance. I love God. You know, some people say, your cup already full. The Lord said, I'm going to fill it up and run it over. <laughs> you, you, you must say, you got enough. The Lord said, I'm going to give you more. I'm going to bless you so much, they're going to run you over. Glory to God. Who is going to serve a God like this? He has it all. He's got all power. So whose report will you believe? I'm going to believe the report of the Lord. I'm going to believe what the Bible says because the Bible fulfills itself. And the Bible comes to pass. I'm going to believe the report of the Lord. The one who has all power. Did y'all know that? The devil got a little power. And God's got all power. And then if you get weary, go to the book of Revelation then God said, when I get done, when he get done with him, he said, I'm going to throw the devil in the lake of fire. That means he got all power. My God. He got power to make it happen. God's got power to make his will be done. He's got power to make you live when you want to die. He's got power to raise you up when you die. He's got all power. My God today. First John 4, 1 through the beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are going into the world. Did y'all know that? Oh, yes, yes. Hereby know ye that the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesses that Jesus is coming to flesh, is of God. Anybody confessing that Jesus is coming to flesh, that's of God. Yes. And every spirit that confesses that not that Jesus is coming to flesh is not of God. So that's easy for you to know, right? Yes. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, where we have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. But we ought to know. Why we serve the Lord. We all ought to have a reason why we serve God. And when the Bible said we ought to have an answer for the hope that we have in the Lord. Because all of us are missionaries, all of us are evangelists, because your greatest testimony is why did you get saved? Because you can help somebody else. You said, John, I was going through, I couldn't make, uh, things were coming against me, I might go give my heart to the Lord. So I can get it right with God. So we have to have hope. Why do we have hope in the Lord? For the world needs you now. Did y'all know that? The world needs all of you. Your household needs you. Your children need you. Your friends, your associates, your connections, your area of influence. They need to know the Jesus that's in you. And it's time for Jesus to rise that's in you. To help somebody else along the way. Don't you know you got a voice? Y'all got a voice? You got an area of influence? Whether it's just your kids, your grandkids, your cousin, your niece, and your nephew, some got even extended influence. You have a testimony. You can testify because you got victory in your mouth Amen. of what God has done for you. Yes, and you, if you say anything what God did, you got a testimony. Amen. And can't nobody tell it like you can tell it what the Lord has done for you. John, I thought I was going to die, but God healed my body. I didn't think I was going to make it, but God put somebody in my life. Glory to God. I almost had a nervous breakdown, but God didn't let me go in this same asylum. They almost put me in the strip jacket, but thanks be to God, look at me now. I live on my own. I cook for myself. I get up. Do what I need to do. You got a testimony of what God has done for you. There's people in the world got testimony. They don't even call on the Lord, but God has done so much for them. I used to talk to so many people that should be dead. Glory to God, 
the Lord said, God had nothing here for a purpose. Lord, you know you called it, you were dead, and you still here. God got a purpose for you. Yeah. Glory to God. And we ought to use that voice to lead others to Christ. First Peter 3 and 15 says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man and ask you the reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Don't we see the signs of the judgment? Don't we see the great falling away? Don't we see people falling away from moral standards? Don't we see uh, abominations on TV and all everywhere we go uh, against biblical teaching? Don't we see the word of God being fulfilled? In our lives. And that's what the Bible tells us. Jesus was the fulfillment of the law. What we could keep in Ten Commandments, God gave us grace and mercy through Jesus Christ to be our sacrificial lamb and savior of the entire world. Jesus became the great testator. The testator is the one who dies to cause the will and testament to come into force. Someone must die in order to enact a new will and testament. Did you know that? Every time you deal with people reading wills, you can't read a will until somebody dies. Amen. You can formulate a will, but a will cannot be enforced until that person dies. So Jesus had to die to make the New Testament live. He's the testator. He died for the new will and testament to be put in force. It's because of Jesus' death on the cross that we have a New Testament. The will and testament went into force, what, over 2,000 years ago. Jesus, the son of God, Mary's baby. Well, what all the Bible says? The son of David, the seed of Abraham, the lamb of God. He was willingly beaten for all of us. Didn't you know that? Amen. Glory to God. Why are you going through? Look what Jesus went through. Amen. It makes life easy to go through when you think you get the rough end of the stick. Nobody has nailed you to the cross yet. Nobody has put them thorns on your head yet. Nobody is stuck and pierced you in the side yet. Glory to God. Amen. But he sacrificed his life on the old rugged cross. And he died on the tree, taking the curse for you and I, that we might have victory today. And if we accept it, we got to accept it. What I tell you, the Bible says that every person be persuaded in their own mind. Your job is to tell the testimony. Your job is to tell them what God is. You can't make them get saved. You can't make them receive it. The Bible said they got to be persuaded in their own mind to walk in it, to live in it, to believe in it, and to achieve it through faith of confession. Believe in God and in the Lord Jesus Christ. So we got to accept it. People have to accept the finished work of Jesus on the cross and have the testimony that Jesus Christ is our life. Did you know that? We have no life without Jesus. And victory is in the word of God. Jesus became, he, the Bible says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. I'm giving y'all a history lesson. In him was life, and the life was the life of men. Colossians 3 and 4 said, Then if he then be risen, with Christ. We're just in the Easter season, right? We're talking about our salvation. If you be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitting on the right hand of God. In other words, set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. All of us leaving here one day. You can't take nothing with you. You brought nothing in this world, you're taking nothing out. For ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. When we don't believe and accept Jesus as our Savior, when people don't believe and they're against Jesus and they don't receive him and they got the knowledge of him, they're worse than demons. Because the Bible said the demons tremble at the name of Jesus. For James 2 and 19 said, Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe in trouble, but they cannot accept the saving faith of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We need a word from God, saints. We need a word from God. You often hear me say, one word from God will transform your life. 
If God said live, that just transformed your whole life right there. One word from God will transform your whole life. One word from God. One word. And then when we get the word, we need to pray over the word. We need to pray over the word. Then we need to repent, accept the word, then obey the word. Do you know what I'm talking about? The word of God will never pass away. The grass wither, the flower fades away, but the word of God shall stand the test of time. God's word never returns to him void, but it accomplishes the assignment. Wherever God sends his word, it accomplishes to do whatever he wants it to do. Why? Because he's got the power to watch over it and to make it happen. He's the only one that can do that. You spoke some things that didn't happen. You meant well. I'll be there at 10 15. But something happened. The light turned red. It was a car accident. You cannot, but God watches over to make it happen exactly like He said. Jesus, the word that became flesh and dwelt among us, Jesus received the word and prayed. Jesus did more praying than anything when you read the Bible, when He was on earth. Jesus was obedient. Jesus crucified the flesh. Jesus overcame. Then if Jesus overcame, we can overcome. Through his power and his help. By letting this mind be in you that was what? Also found in Christ Jesus. According to Philippians 2 and 8 in your Bible, Jesus was humble, he obeyed God, and he even died on the cross, being found at the appearance of mankind. So then what should we do? We should constantly bring forth fruit worthy of repentance, realizing that we were wretched and undone. And stand in the need of a risen Savior. This means genuine, heartfelt sorrow in our heart. You know, some people don't become godly sorrow. They got crocodile teeth. They don't mean it from their heart. They don't mean it. God's looking at the heart. Man looks at the outer appearance. You know, some people are actors. They're really good. But God sees beyond that. Sees beyond the best actor in the world. He knows whether they mean it from their heart or they just doing something. So we have to become godly sorry, repentant, and ask God to forgive us of our sin. And we always have to ask God to forgive us, right? We don't know what we said or done sometimes. Sometimes even in our best day, we might have offended somebody we didn't mean to offend. And we say, Lord, forgive me if I said or done anything today. I didn't mean it. If, you know, I didn't want to sin today. We got to be contrite. We want God to cleanse our heart every day, right? You often hear me say that God's a part of me to claim, keep me on the wheel, right? You're not perfected. You want God to keep working on you until you leave here. Yeah, so you can go with the Lord. Yeah. Wash you, make you clean, and then wash you over again. First John 3, 20 through 21. For all our heart, for if our hearts can give us, God is greater than our heart, right? God is greater than our heart and knowing all things. Beloved, if our heart can give us, not then we have confidence toward God. If your very heart can be you, you've got to walk towards God. And we serve it in the kingdom of God. And we get a thump in our heart, uh-oh, we got to walk towards God. And we need God to forgive us. For no unrighteous person shall inherit the kingdom of God. All unrighteousness is a sin. You know that? People like to make black lies, white lies, blue sins, green sins. But all unrighteousness is a sin. All unrighteousness. So from 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. If we go live victorious, we cannot be deceived by the enemy. We got to do this work. We got to work on this thing. That's why we got Bible study, Sunday school class. We read our Bible, we study, we worship, we live this thing. And it's a process. Yes. We don't get there overnight, but we're working on this thing. I want God to work on me daily. You hear me say, I'm asking God to make me better every day. I need help. We all need help. We don't want to be caught up in our own mind. You see people that they get caught up in their own self. They get, oh my God, they got the deep head. And they're going to lose out. Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6, 9-11, Know you not the God of righteousness shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor uh, adulterers, nor effeminate. Homosexual or abusers of themselves with mankind or thieves, covetous, drunkards, revelers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Everything that's against God's word, they're not going to heaven. We got to do it according to God's word. And such were some of you, Paul, right? 
All of us got saved from something. God brought us all out of something. Nobody was born perfect. We all have to repent, right? That's why I tell you, even the best person, even the nicest person on your job, the nicest person you run into, if they have not repented of their sins, they're not saved. I don't care how good you are, how nice you are, if you have not repented according to the Bible, you're not saved. Well, I don't hurt nobody. I don't say nothing. I say to myself, but have you repented? Have you asked God to forgive you of your sin? Then you're not saved. That's the word of God. It's not about how good you are. It's about doing what God said in his word. And that's what I teach people. It's not about how you feel. It's about what God's word said. Because you know all of us feel different. We feel different about things. Now that don't bother me. I don't care about that. I don't know. It ain't about us. It's about what God said in his word. Paul says that everything is unlawful for me, but all things are not expedient, suitable. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. I mean, there's some things I can legally do. Paul said there's some things that, you know there's some things legal to do in America, but it's against the Bible. Well, America said I can do it, but God said you can't do it. Amen. In the word of God. So he said, I'm not, he said, I'm not gonna do those things. I won't be brought under the power of anything that's not there. Huh? Amen. Meaning there's something you can legally do, but I don't do this. There's no harm in something, but Paul says, I don't want to be a stumbling block for somebody. And that's how we grow in the church. The more we grow in the Lord. We ought to grow in the Lord and we don't want to be a stumbling block for anybody. We want people to see us that they would want to be saved. That they won't be us. We shouldn't be, you know, mean on Monday. Well, you saw me at church. I was happy Sunday. I'm mean Monday because I ain't in church. That's not Christ-like. You ought to be the same every time somebody see you. You ought to be easily entreated. I'm glad when people see me and they say, hey, how you doing? I say, hey, how you doing? Because you know when people don't like you, they run from you. <laughs> it's oh my God, they want that mean preacher. Oh my God. But we ought to be happy. Amen. That don't mean happiness is always going on. Right. That doesn't mean you didn't get no bad news. But you don't have to tell nobody head off. You ask God to help you. Right. You want to help somebody, right? Amen. You don't want nobody to tell you head off. He's like, I didn't do nothing. Why you on me? Glory to God. So it's the little sins that make, make us miss heaven. We're going to live victorious. Let's don't let the little things keep us from going to heaven. Don't let us, the little gray areas, you know, there's no gray areas with God. Amen. You know, it's gray areas with the law. You know, eh, that's the gray area. There's no gray area. It's either black or white. God sees sin as sin. And we don't want to miss heaven. Second Corinthians 10, 5 through 6, casting down imagination and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Everything you think about, you got to bring it into obedience of Christ. And then when you get the bad thoughts in your mind, make sure you don't entertain them too long. Make sure you get them out of your mind. Because first it's conceived in your mind, you know, premeditated murder, people were thinking about it already. When they went and did it, they were just acting upon what they've been thinking about for a long period of time. So that's why when you get bad thoughts in your mind, you got to hurry up and get them out before your body acts on it. You know, you know, ooh, Joe, I sure want to slap him, but you better quit thinking about that. Because pretty soon when you meet Joe, you're going to slap him. Instead of saying, Lord, that's not right. I know they did, but I, God help me, forgive me, take that out of my I don't want to do that. I want to live according to your word. You don't want to make, make major mistakes and then here you are. You don't want to be like Neil Smith. He should have went up there and did that. Go up there and slap a grown man like that. And now all of a sudden, you got to ask everybody to forgive you. And I shouldn't have done that. I wasn't thinking. You know what people are? I wasn't thinking. That's why the Bible said be slow to speak. Swift to hear. Slow to anger. That's why the Bible tells you, think before you speak, before you move. Yes. Then you won't have no regrets. And you won't be trying to take stuff back that you can't take back. Because you can't take it back. They're going to play that till he die. Every, every Academy Award year, they're going to play it till he die. Remember what happened in 2022? Let's play it back. Only God can help him out. 
God, I need your help to take that out of my mind. Remove that from me. That it don't have a stronghold on me. And having a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. But we should want to be saved and spirit filled and live this victorious life. Our bodies are what? The temple of the Holy Ghost. We are bought with a price. Let me get out of here today. Therefore, glorify God in your body. God wants you to glorify him in his body, in your spirit, which are God's. He wants you to do it. God wants us to be spirit-filled. God wants us to be worshipers and praisers. We ought to be worshipers, shouldn't we? We ought to be able to praise God. You know how they do it. The, I'm, a, I'm a sport, you know, I love sports. They holler for their team, holler for their athlete, who we like, we all got our team. How, why should we praise the God of all flesh? Why should we praise the God that he take our air from us we'll die right now? Yeah. Why should we praise God? Don't you let nobody stop you from praising God. Yeah. Don't let nobody stop you from praising God. And as I told you, if they don't let you praise God in their house, you got a house. Yeah. <laughs> and if the street belongs to the city that they can walk on, I can go out there and dance on the sidewalk. Don't let nobody stop you from praising God. God's done so much for you. Some people dance when they get their diploma. Because God helped them to get it. But don't let nobody stop you from praising God. You know what God did for you. You know you almost lost your mind. You know what God did. Jesus said in John 14, I pray the Father another comfort for you. I'm going away to heaven, but my Father will send you another helper, the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost helps us be victorious. We can't do this on our own. It's not enough just to be saved. We got to have the Holy Ghost in us. We need the Spirit of God to comfort us. He will send it in up my name. He will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatever I have said to you. And the Bible tells us in Acts 1 and 8, you will receive power after the Holy Ghost. Power to do what? Power to live this life. You need power to live this life. We already going through. You need some power to help you that you stay saved. That you stay a witness for God. Acts 2 and 4, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. The Spirit gave them other. We need the Holy Ghost to make sure that we make it to heaven. We need the Holy Ghost to make sure we stay saved and we don't backslide like we did when we was in school. <laughs> you know, when we was in school, us that grew up in the church, we get saved in the Bible, go to school the next day and backslide. Yeah. And then the devil said, Well, you out now. You said the wrong thing, you thought the wrong thing. But you got to stay in this thing. Amen. We are the salt of the earth. We are the preservers, the flavor that affects our surrounding. We're victorious because of our relationship with Jesus Christ. You got victory because you got Jesus. We are the lights of the world. The eternal salvation should shine no matter what you're going through. It should shine in you because any light stick. Y'all ever had a dark house? Any kind of light is a light, right? And if you got a dark house, even a little candlestick is a bright light. Let your light shine so that mankind can see your good work. You all draw people to Christ. People see you when you go to the grocery store, see you when you drive your car. They see you when you're going around. Everybody, people watch you. And some people watch you for years and don't say nothing to you. Like my grandma says, the one lady watched her for, for decades and finally told her many years down the road, she said, you're just what you've been testifying you are. But she watched it for many years. People watch you to see if you really read. See if you really say. So if they really what they're talking about. Now, I don't need that. That don't look like the salvation. So the fruit of the spirit is what? Love, joy, and we're victorious. We're going to have all this in us. Peace, long suffering. Some of us got short patience, so we have to pray hard, right? Wherever your weakness is, you got to pray hard today. The Lord, my patience is just like a little wick. I need you to give me some more patience. So I can be long-suffering. Goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. If we don't love everybody, if we don't love our enemies, if we don't pray for our enemies, we're not going to make it to heaven. But the Bible said we got to do it. If you got a bad temper, what? Ask God to help you. And when he saved you, he'll take that out of you. So you can live victorious. The Bible says anybody that can't keep their uh, anger is like a city without a wall. That means everybody can get to you. When you can't control your temper, 
everybody can push your butt. Yeah. And guess what? Everybody going to push it all day. The devil said, push them all the time. Push them till they fall off the roof. Push them till they die. That's what the devil do. Yeah. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. He tried to kill you. Yeah. So keep on pushing them, baby, yeah. until they die. So they can go to hell with me. But you better say, I ain't going with you. Right. You got a revenge spirit. If we victorious, we got to get it out. That's, right. That's not of God. God said, vengeance is mine, said the Lord. Amen. I'll pay. Yeah. You got to give it to the Lord. All of us been done wrong, yeah. but we don't never do it right. You know, humans don't do it right when they do revenge. That's why God says, mine. You kill my cat, I kill your cat, your dog, and your neighbor's cat. That's what they do. That's why the Lord says, vengeance is mine, said the Lord. I'll pay. I'll do that. If we're going to live victorious, get rid of the hatred spirit. If we can't suffer for Christ's sake, we're not going to make it. If we can't take the chastening of the Lord. Don't you know the Lord will rebuke us? If we live in victorious, the Lord rebuke us. He'll say, you didn't do that right. If you really lived the Spirit of God, you didn't say that right, Joe. You didn't say that right, Billy. You didn't do that right. You didn't treat your neighbor right. You didn't do that right. The Lord will let you know that you serve the Lord. You'll get rebuked when you're wrong. If you can't let your evil feelings go, if you can't take anything in church, Lord have mercy. Don't you know the enemy come to church to run you out of church? He don't want you to be in church. The devil don't want you blessing the Lord. <laughs> Did you know that? Sometimes we think when well, I'm going to church, the devil ain't going to be there. He said to He tried to stay here and see what he can do to you. But we got to get him out of here. We got to get our mind on the Lord. We got to give him. We are missing. We don't want to be missing anything. We want to receive from the Lord. And we don't have the Spirit of God resting in our lives. We need the Word. In this world, what did Jesus say? If we're going to live victorious, the Lord said, in this world you should have what? Tribulation. All of y'all been through some things. Yeah. Yeah. Now we ain't got time for all your testimony. But we all can say this. The Lord is bringing you through a brought you out of yeah. In this world, Jesus said, you're going to have tribulation. Somebody gonna die. You gonna have a bad relationship. You gonna have a divorce. You gonna have a, a breakup, a separation. You know, people gonna treat you wrong. There's gonna be some things happen to you. But be a good cheer, Jesus said, yeah. because I have overcome the world. You may be mistreated. Let me get out of here. You may be misunderstood, but you got victory in the name of Jesus. Yeah. You've been talked about. My God, the Bible says you ought to be, in other words, you be, ought to be unsettled and everybody saying good things about you. Because everybody don't love you. Everybody not saying good things about you. Did they say all good things about Jesus? <laughs> they did. Somebody told me that at work one day. And they said, somebody don't like you. I said, well, they didn't like Jesus either. Or they didn't like Jesus. They said, I don't know why they don't like you. I said, I don't know either. But they don't they didn't all like Jesus. I said, I must be doing something right. Because I didn't do nothing to them. I didn't do anything to them. My God, if we're going through some challenges, some trial, some difficulties, some sickness, some pain, heartache, Jesus overcame the world. And we can overcome it. We need to get our lives in order so the Lord can help us. Jesus already gave us the victory. And we have the victory in the name of Jesus. We're more than conquerors. We already got the victory. So number one, get the word of God. Number two, learn how to repent. Number three, learn how to pray. Number four, have some faith in God. And then we get faith in God, let your words and your actions and your deeds match up with the word of God. Use your weapons. You got the word of God. When things are coming against you, get in the word of God and see what God says. Oh, my God. Learn how to pray more. Pray till you get a breakthrough. Jesus prayed more than anything. Learn how to pray at home. Pray. I heard in Sunday school class. Sometimes some things come upon you. We all live in this world. You don't know what to do. You be followed. You need to pray. God, settle me. Help me. Right now, I need help. It's time to go and bend the knee. It's time for God to help me. I got bad news. I got a peak slip. They're laying off 10,000. But God, I'm coming to you. God that supplies all my needs. Man don't supply my needs. You get 
just using man as a vessel, but you supply all my needs. God will make a way for you. I know it will. Learn how to praise God in the midst of what you're going through. It's too time to praise Him when you feel like it and when you don't. You don't have no right not to praise God. You may be sick in your body, but you better give God the praise. You may be going through, but give God your worship. Fight the good fight of faith. Fight offensive. Fight defensive. You already got the victory. In the Bible today, in the mess the Bible said, that the swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where he is, thy stay. Oh, grave, where he is, thy victory. The sting of death is sin, and the script is in the law. But thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through Jesus Christ. I got a secret weapon. I got Jesus on the inside. Paul writes the letter to let us know that Jesus was victorious. What was our greatest destroyer? That Jesus defeated our horrible enemy of mankind, which is death. He removed the weapon of death. He takes the potency of death. Jesus defeats death, hell, and the grave. What sin that caused to do in the world? Jesus takes power out of the grave. He takes authority and he has the keys to the kingdom of God. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. The natural must become the spiritual to have eternal life. The corruptible body must put on incorruption. The mortal must put on immortality. Therefore the dead
majority, there could be 12 people over there against you. All the nations can be against you. But if you got God on your side, you and God make a majority.
Pray the Lord never forgot about us. The Lord makes a way for us. There might be one real quickly that wants to come and pray so we get out of here. We took a little extra time today because the Lord wants you to live victorious. He wants you to live a victorious life. Don't give in. Don't give out. Maybe you're going through a challenge. You need somebody to pray with you. We want to pray with you today. We will lay hands on you. We'll continue to pray with you. That the Lord will bring you through. We need help from the Lord. We need help. It's good when we have intercessors to pray for the church to grow and to grow. We need intercessors. We need prayer teams that will pray. Many need prayer. Praise the Lord. I heard the one bishop talk about when he needed a job and he went to prayer and the mother was laying oil on him and praying for him. Praying for God to work it out for him. Prayer changes things. We preached at a prayer breakfast about three weeks ago. Prayer changes things. But you have to have a mantle of prayer. And prayer is just not the past. Prayer is not just the pastor's job. Just not the missionary job. Prayer is everybody's job. Because when you go to the book, the Bible says that God says, you know, mankind always pray. And now faith. Not lose heart in what you're doing. Then you hear me say from the scripture in the New Testament, the Lord said, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. You don't know what you're going to face tomorrow. You don't know what you're getting ready to go through with. But I got a connection with God. You can't wait till it happens to try to pray. Lord, I didn't see this coming. I would have prayed yesterday. But I prayed yesterday so I can make it today. And I'm praying today so I can make it tomorrow. Praise the Lord. I pray. Prayer is work. But you got to dig in. Pray. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous person are there the month. The saints ought to be there. And you can't get a hold of the pastor. You can pray, call on the saint at church, and they pray for you. Then God turn it around. Then God fix it. Yeah. Praise the Lord. God's doing his things. I want you to hold on. Don't get discouraged. And when you feel yourself getting discouraged, guess who you go to? Huh? Y'all got oil at home. And we got we got extra oil here. You feel yourself getting discouraged, you gotta wait till you get in. You start feeling, you know you better than you anybody else. You know yourself. You start feeling discouraged, like, Lord, I need you to encourage me. I need help. The Bible said that shit. Glory to God. Lord, I'm confused. I'm hurt. Glory to God. I need help. Glory to God. I don't know what's going on. Woo! Glory to God. The Bible that shit about sin. Glory to God. And do you know when you be quiet, the Lord will minister to you once you get done talking. Glory to God. You got help. Glory to God. Not only we're praying for you, but you can pray for yourself. Don't you never forget to pray for yourself, too. I need help. Everybody can pray. But the thing of it is, when we have a covenant, when we live right with God, we have a covenant relationship with Him. That means God is committed to do what his word says because we live for him. He's not a rabbit's foot. He's not your lucky coin. You hear people, I hear people that won't live like this. Well, I pray. You pray because you want God to do something. You got to pray all the time. You want God to work a miracle. You want God to do it. God's going to do it. We pray. God's going to add on such as should be saved. Glory to God. Hey, all the kids, we do your hands, point it this way.
God for the victory. Thank you for the victory. Glory to God. Thank you for the victory.